Eh, buenas tardes a... Good afternoon to everyone here present today. We are starting hearing number 11 of the 182 period of session. This hearing we deal with the situation of human rights of environmental defenders in Guatemala. This is a hearing that has been requested by the Instituto AMAC and the Human Rights Commission of Guatemala. I would like to thank the organizations of the civil society and also the presence of the state of Guatemala. I am here today with Commissioner Joel Hernandez, who is the Rapporteur for Human Rights Defenders, second by Vice President Flavia Piovesan, and also Country Rapporteur Esmeralda Rosemena de Troitinho. Also, the Executive Secretary, uh, Tanya Ad hoc Executive Secretary, Maria Claudia Pulido, and the on social, economic, cultural, and economic rights, Soledad Garcia Munoz. Also, the team of the Executive Secretariat that follows up the human rights situation in Guatemala and human rights defenders. I would like to greet them all and also the team of the Executive Secretariat who provides technical uh, support. Technical um, details are very important for this hearing. This hearing will be organized in the following way. 20 minutes for the civil society uh, representatives, then 20 minutes for the state of Guatemala. Afterwards, the commission will have 20 minutes to ask questions and make comments to the civil society and the state in connection to the issues that have been brought up. Afterwards, civil society organizations will have 12 more minutes and the state 12 more minutes as well. As you can see in the screen, there is a timer. As soon as you start talking, the timer starts working and it turns red when you have some minutes left. So please pay attention to that. So we don't have to interrupt you. Uh, and after your 20 minutes, you will have more time to take the floor. Having said that, I will now give the floor to the representatives of the civil society. And I ask you to please introduce yourselves. And please, if you're not speaking, keep your microphones off to avoid any interferences. Thank you. Good afternoon to the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights and the representatives of the state. We are here in Guatemala and several delegations of indigenous women are present here who are environmental defenders of the Maya Kachi Maya, the Maya Kachikel of Zacatecas, the Maya Pocaman, the Xinca people, the Instituto AMAC, the Commission of Human Rights of Guatemala, the Center for uh, Legal Action, the energy of the path of the um, water and principle of power to everyone. We are here today to present to you our situation as women environmental defenders against um, mining companies in my country. Good afternoon. My name is Olia. I am here today to tell you everything that has happened in our municipality against mining. 
As fishermen, we have been struggling for five years to defend our lake of Isabel, our territory, mountains, and water sources in our municipality. Mining is killing us. It is taking away our wealth, what we have in our municipality. And I want you to know, I want you all to know, everyone here, present here today, how the government acts against the uh, mining company, which is affecting our people. For 20 days, we resisted. We were demanding our rights to guarantee our rights to be heard by the government, the municipal government, the, gov the governor, and the Ministry of Energy and Mining, the president of the um, Republic of Guatemala, Alejandro Giamatei, but they don't care. They care about wealthy people because our resistance, this government sent military forces, police officers, the public ministry, helicopters, drones, with the governor to do away with our resistance. And they achieved that because on Friday, they got here for 20 days. After 20 days, the government sent more forces against us. We were demanding our rights. We were asking this company to stop working in our territory. We know that we are, we have a judgment by the constitutional court for this mining company to stop operating and they have not complied with that judgment and they continue operating in our territory. That's why we are demanding our rights, but with this government, we cannot do anything. During those 20 days, we woke up with a state of siege and searches in our homes. The, the ancestral councils that have been elected by its own people were searched. They got into our homes, went over our belongings. They took away our food. Girls and boys were scared. The police officers threatened children. That was my case. We, that was happened to me and to the other members of my community, the members of the ancestral council. Their wives were at home and their wives were beaten by the state of siege. They searched our homes and the children were crying, screaming, because they were scared. They were looking for the other members of the community and the public ministry and these officers 
we were sent by this president and by the company. They want us in prison. They did that to me because the judgment granted by the Constitutional Court I, I, they went over my contact information and I, and when we were resisting, I provided food to the other members of the community that participated. And that's when they told me that it was my fault that these agents were four agents that were um, wounded with firearms, but that was not our fault. It was the workers of that company who were paid, two different groups were paid to taint our resistance that day. But we know that we know who were there, who were the people who had firearms, the company. Worked in order for the government to believe their lives and they achieved that goal. And that truth is a lie. This government likes lying to international countries. I am a woman and I have to say the truth. I do not lie. We need the support, your support. To ask this government the same thing happened in the Chineval community whose members were evicted, their belongings and their houses were burned because the government was trying to attack us because of our resistance. They were sent by they participated in this resistance because they were elected by their communities. They are part of the central councils. That's why they were evicted. And this is happening to us in, in the municipality of Listo. My, that's all, thank you. Dear commissioners, we are going through economic, social, political uh, crisis, a systematic attack to human rights defenders, leaders who are defending the water, human rights defenders, judges that are independent journalists and social uh, communicators, and all people who one way or another uh, descend from the arbitrary decisions of the current government. That's why they are uh, endangering these democratic values and the current government is an example of that is the testimony of the person who spoke before me we carried out two missions in which we identified that a community was affected. This affects especially women, adolescents, and children in that community. Thank you. We want to say that the municipality of Store and other uh, territories have been attacked and controlled 
by the state, the Constitutional Court granted uh, in 2019 a judgment that uh, consultation should be carried out to regulate mining activities. This process should be carried out with the legitimate authorities elected by the communities by the attack that the state has been systematic through a state of siege since 2019. This has been a continuous attack. We, the Ministry of Energy and Mining, presented um, processes of consultation which are not true. These processes are carried out by groups and institutions that uh, favor the mining company. And this was carried out in 2019 during um, state of siege. Due to political persecution, the fear in these territories has increased. The, the lives of the defenders and artisans are at risk. It is very important for us to um, request the uh, operation of this mine to be stopped. This is a situation of control and terror, and we request the Inter-American Commission to take into account this measure requested by ancestral authorities and other persons which is identified as 997-21. Within the framework of this hearing, in coordination of the Human Rights Commission of Guatemala, we developed a report regarding the human rights situations of human rights and defender in connection with the impact of mining to the lives of the ancestral communities in Guatemala. This uh, research took into account La Puya, women uh, that are part of the Pocuaman, Cachiquel, Etu, women that are part of the Chinga Committee, environmental defenders of Santa Olaya, Santa Olalia, Huehuetenango, and Maya Canjobal. This research that has been developed within the framework of the state of siege and made us develop a field research about the violations and the effect mining is having in the lives of women in the indigenous communities. One of the conclusions is that women are mainly affected by mining activities. They are gathering water, washing their clothes, preparing their food for their families. That's why we know that women defend um, basins, water, the forests and the mountains. During these processes of exchange with these women, we were able to determine that many of them within their families were affected, such as uh, different diseases in their skin, lung disease, psychological uh, problems, and have suffered anxiety. Water is polluted, and sometimes they have to buy water. Thus, this uh, worsens the situation of poverty, uh, child malnutrition suffered by this community. Also, we have warned the dangers of mining and our field research has shown that the state policy in Guatemala is characterized by control, surveillance and at attacks and harassment and also murder women who are in the front line of resistance. The uh, analysis in the different communities allow us to understand that it is the state of siege, the mechanism used by the state in alliance with the companies uh, which uh, breaks the uh, community organizations. 
the uh, members of Santa Eulalia in different communities uh, have explained that militarization is affecting their lands and land distribution and the organization of the communities. In those situations that were presented by my colleagues, the state of Guatemala vulnerates different rights and breaches different rights against women and the environment, especially the right to exert, freely exert, the right to care and maintain the environment and the ecolo ecological violence, the access to participation and engagement of women in topics related to climate change and environment, which also implies the access to environmental justice for women and for indigenous people. Especially we consider that this right has been breached, the right to prior free consented uh, consultation. Those rights are individual and collective rights that belong to the indigenous people and they their free determination is being affected. As my colleagues have mentioned, the um, the, uh, co the, the we, women are at the first lines of effects and they receive the effects of militarization and the public force which is used against environmental advocates to retaliate them and to bring back to their memories the serious violations suffered during the internal conflicts in armed conflicts in the country with the extractive industry produced to the territories lakes and uh, river create risk for their survival and these practices are tolerated and even uh, promoted by the Guatemalan state therefore we can see that the Guatemalan government announces the, the end of a consultation process in the Saba territory where, but this territory has been militarized for over two months. How is it that we can talk about good faith in this kinds of process? Therefore, we request the Honorable Commission to call upon the state for the compliance of the international standards of protections of indigenous people and environmental advocates. I will give the floor to my colleague for a closing remark. Out of what was requested by the, um, my colleagues, I would like to thank the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights for giving us this forum to speak up and we maintain our stance. Indigenous women want our territories free of mining our bodies as well. And we hope our voices are heard. Thank you. Thank you. The representation of the civil society organizations and especially indigenous women who have given their position today. I would like to give the floor now to the state during 20 minutes. Requesters and petitioners, I would like to present the declaration of the state of Guatemala made up by the following institutions, Ministry of Energy and Mines, General Office of the Prosecution, Council of Protected Areas and Directorate for Peace and Human Rights with the good faith that has characterized the state of Guatemala, we come here in order to create a constructive dialogue for the parties. However, we should focus the, the state of Guatemala doesn't accept this forum to uh, present um, indications without the the process of proving before of evidence beforehand, the information provided now should not be manipulated. The state will warranty the use and exercise of the citizens' rights. In that 
on that light of thoughts, we should establish that the pronouncement is made through these the right of equality recognized by the constitution and other treaties ratified by the country. The state actions are made under the uh, state of non condition and these underscores the commitment of the state to recognize the rights of women and children who inhabit the state. In October 2021, this hearing was requested and the state informs the natural exploitation of natural resources, non-renewal natural resources are translated into actions such as exploitation, reasonable exploitations of hydrocarbon. Second, on the achievements of the states in this destructive process and consultations, apart from detailing the information prepared by the state of Guatemala, we should tell the commissioners and the Guatemalan people that in 2021, the parties that were subject to consultation were um, were agreed and these uh, complies with the treaty of the ILO, especially the people Amaya Kechi. And this process was coordinated by the Ministry of Energy and Mines. And this is a first agreement of this nature in the current administration. This is a pro this is this means progress in terms of protections to human rights, indigenous people and environment. We in the framework of the mining activity in the country. These are within a, a plan that has uh, health and education at the core. And we want to promote the creation of jobs, protection of the environment and infrastructure in compliance with the commitment. These agreements will be monitored and the process of consultation is carried out by organizations representative of the indigenous people who together with the leaders made community meetings so that so as to guarantee that they have been in their areas of influence third ad advances and progress in the relations in the pro consultation processes with indigenous people we have the guidelines for the celebration of meetings of consultations with indigenous people apart from the rate of empower there have been reparations to the consultation process to indigenous people we adopted the criteria k when there is a project such project has to be some suspended and this is the precedent that warranties this consultation process in guatemala it is um, not, 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 it cannot be challenged the fact that consultations are a very important mechanism through which several rights are protected, but such processes should have legal frameworks that establish the procedures. And with the agreement reached in December 2021, the Guatemalan state makes a very important step forward. The court rate rates that it's the state which has to warranty the effective engagement of neighbors so that their rights are not affected. And there have been judgments, several judgments that establish the scope of the consultations and the characteristics that have been that have to be taken into consideration. They have be they have to be carried out in ideal means and in, in the case at hand as to consultation, which is not the only one, there have been other judgments where we have the right to consultations for the progress in the project of the mining project. This was started in 2016 within the case law 016 and this was Minera Phoenix. In 2018, there was a greater fun power identified with a certain file, and this was to protect the right of indigenous people. And they claim to have a pre prior meeting of a consultation. 
the state of uh, the Ministry of Energy and Mines orders the consultation of uh, two indigenous people according to the guidelines and establishing guidelines for its compliance. The Bridge of Amparo decided to reduce the area of exploitation of 247 kilometer, square kilometers as 6.4 kil square kilometers. And this suspension was maintained where, while the process of consultation was carried out. We underscore the following aspects. The court, based on the judgment, detected object on object one or an object two, for the electric dams established the guidelines for the consultation processes. The consultation is made with the representation of indigenous communities in the area of influence, and we will call upon the representative association so as to carry out the necessary proceedings for the consultation. The ministry in accordance with the Rita Fampara presented, sought for the recognition of the different communities so that they could participate within the process. However, within the communications presented by these people, they did not represent the Amaya Pichi community and they were not within this framework. The Ministry of Energy answered its demands and there was a process of a prior consultation that was carried out at that time and there were several violent actions outside the judgment and they carried out actions by which were executed by the people from the municipality of Estor and this was made by the legislative body and seven the state underscores that the capture of, of the detention of people where the state of siege was ordered were related to judicial orders so as to comply with the judgment of Amparo, the advances of the mining project in the Department of Santa Rosa, the Ministry of Energy and Mines moved forward in the consultation process with the Shingan in the Guatemalan people. And those are guidelines which are according in the case file identified with uh, slash 17. And we started a dialogue with the parliament of the Xinka people in Guatemala and the authorities of these peoples. In 2020, there were two activities preparation activities for this consultation. There were several commitments acquired within the framework of the constitutional framework. And this was carried out in May, 2021. Out of this result, we started to coordinate the possible dates for the pre pre prior consultation activities and consultation activities. In 2021, we started to carry out the prior consultations activities so as to define Fine specific topics. All the activities are carried out in the headquarters of the Xinka people of Guatemala. And there was a study carried out of the cultural impact that this project will have in the Xinka communities. As to the regulation for the protection of the environment, the state of Guatemala has uh, the uh, license to protect the environment, and we revised and approved 33 study assessment, impact assessment, and these studies are essential for the granting of licenses, and these protect the rights of communities and their, their uh, agricultural areas. The prevention of violence in the municipalities, it is very important to mention some of the actions that the Guatemalan state have taken. And we have developed during 2021, 
there were processes of training in several municipalities, San Rafael La Flores, El Estor, Chinautan, in each of them, there were several topics, sex in agreement, violence against women, prevention of um, um, the, the care to provide, to improve, to, to prevent the violence in several arenas, we can see the number of people trained in the different places, access to justice, the Guatemalan state respects the state of law and its constitutional rights. We remind the, the commission that these warranties all people the access to justice and dependencies of the state, and this is a positive right which is applicable in the country. As to environmental justice, the state of Guatemala has created several actions in October 2019 there was a declaration united by the environmental justice together with the civil society the objectives of the declaration establish strategies to avoid the interpretation of several areas with uh, illegal mining um, and drug trafficking to it strengthened the protected areas in Guatemala to protect people from the crimes uh, of people that, defend, that are advocates for the environment. And there is several, um, the strengthening of the public sector as to women rights. The Ministry of Guatemala has provided training as to the rights of women and prosecution against people who are advocates of human rights. The work of the public ministry is carried out in an objective way and complies with the standards. And this strengthens the state of law and these has several prosecution offices for the uh, crimes committed against women and protection of the environment. In 2020, there was a memorandum of understanding with the agency of the United States in order to improve the capacity of the public office and the prosecution office is part of this uh, program for uh, species who, which are a, a, a threat with, at, in danger of extinction and this um, wants to protect the resources of the state. The increase of um, crimes, the uh, in the screen, you can see some of the figures of the increase of the prosecution activities, and this shows the efforts of the state to protect the rights of women and children and adolescents. And there are some uh, actions carried out to prevent the violence against women and for the breach of rights of women, children and adolescents. There is a 24 hour a day uh, center to receive their complaints and the advances of the judicial body with the creations of tribunals in the different departments. Alta Grapaz, El Progreso y Zabal, which have Chimumula and the increase of several judges that are in the uh, in crimes against the environment from six to 12 judges, the implementation of tr specialized tribunal in crimes related to women and femicides. Out of the communal territories, treatment of enshrined areas and Guatemala contemplates for the environment as a fundamental right, Article 60, 67, 66, 98, 99, 116, 166, and these are environmental protections where the public institutions are included through the protected areas. There is a national interest to protect the national heritage, and there are also standards to protect biologic diversity, and these are agreements on the biological diversity. The Protocol of Kyoto of the 
Framework Convention on the United Nations and out on the enshrined places. There are laws to protect these places and the ministerial agreement of the Ministry of Culture, the law of protected areas, which have components of valorization of enshrined places and the threats to several culture aspects. And in order to show the commitment of the Guatemalan state for the protection of these protected places, we mentioned within this mining process, together with the judgment issued by the tribunal, where the Ministry of Sports carry, had to carry out several studies so as to see whether this project respects the national uh, resources. The state of Guatemala represents that there is no prosecution of human rights advocates or environmental advocates for, re for ethnical reasons. The advances presented show the work that the institutions are carrying out with objectivity and complying with the rule of law in Guatemala within the agreement 169 of the ILO. We uh, express our wish to carry out an open dialogue without party, without private interest, and we want to protect social and environmental rights and to open our uh, our dialogue for the petitioners to express their concerns. Thank you. Thank you to the representatives of the state. I have to say that the person who was speaking, it is amazing how fast he spoke without losing his breath because it was truly amazing. First of all, I'm going to thank all the information provided by the state in this space it was very brief so it would be very important for you to send all that information it's a lot of information and as you spoke very fast we were not able to take down notes of everything that was said i am the rapporteur for indigenous peoples and i want to point out that this hearing is a space a mechanism that the Inter-American Commission has to monitor the different human rights situations in uh, regarding certain countries or themes and under no circumstances this is a space to determine the responsibility international responsibility of one state i think it's very important to clarify that because the state may reference to that and these it's not the goal of a hearing to determine the international responsibility of the state. It is a space to listen to the parties, to gather first-hand information from civil society organizations, victims organizations, indigenous communities, and the state itself. And taking those conversations into account, we can develop different uh, roadmaps and actions. I have some doubts and I have to say this. I think that there are two perspectives that are opposing regarding the processes related to the different activities, what is, has happened in the uh, store community. We have heard indigenous women who have uh, taken the floor pointed out that international standards have not been complied with in connection with the convention and also uh, mentioning the repression they have suffered when they have um, carried out demonstrations or the judgment of the constitutional court. The state mentioned different consultations within the framework of this judgment. So first of all, I would like to listen to indigenous women present here in the organizations. What are the observations you have regarding this consultation process and the compliance of the constitutional court taking into account that the government says it has complied with this judgment. 
So there is a difference here. It would be very important for the commission to understand what are the demands regarding that issue. The commission made visible through a press release in November the we are against the use of force within the framework of demonstrations. People are entitled to the right to protest, and the Commission has already expressed its concern in that regard, what was also highlighted by Indigenous women and Indigenous representatives. It would be very important if the state are listening to the uh, Indigenous representatives, we would like to know why the state has not complied with this prior and informed uh, consultation. We would like to listen to the state, how you determine who are the, the representatives of the Maya peoples that are affected by this project, because that is something that has to be discussed. Sometimes the consultation is carried out, but the problem is who are the people involved uh, in that consultation? Who is representing the indigenous people? So I would like to know more about that. Uh, also, I would like to know if the state of siege continues. I don't know if that continues or not. And I believe that these measures should comply with center standards and the commission has never believed that state of siege is a way of solving conflicts such as the one we are discussing today. And on the other hand, in this case, in particular, consultation processes need to comply with international inter-American standards and need to include an intercultural approach, bearing in mind who are the um, representatives of the communities, the different processes of self-determination, and what are the decision-making mechanisms these indigenous communities have. The civil society made up by women has made uh, has highlighted a differentiated impact because they are indigenous and they are women. So we, I would like to know whether this uh, consultation had a gender approach, especially in a country like Guatemala, where the inter-American jurisprudence has heard different cases affecting indigenous women. So there's um, double vulnerability. So we would like to know if that process of um, consultation had a gender approach due to the differentiated approach is uh, these extractivist um, companies or activities have on indigenous women. And finally, I would like to tell the state, but also civil society organizations, going back to my initial words, that there are very different opposing um, perspectives regarding the process that were carried out. In my experience, not only within the commission, but before working with indigenous peoples, there's an issue that is very important, which is implementation. Sometimes the states make great effort to acknowledge uh, legal, constitutional, administrative acknowledgement of the indigenous peoples. And the problem is with implementation. And we can identify this issue with the implementation of all these normative, the sentence complies with all standards when it comes to implementing it. There is a key aspect that is missing, that is um, consultation. That's why I think that you should find a common space of dialogue so that all these normative that the state pointed out can have a differentiated approach, but also includes uh, indigenous communities and organizations. And I believe that my colleagues will agree that uh, the commission is at your disposal to create these spaces of agreement, of discussion. And one of the main problems in this case is related to that, trying to find more spaces of dialogue beyond intentions and everything that was done. Clearly, there are contradicting narratives here. 
Now I will give the floor to my colleagues. I know if the country reporter would like to take the floor. I don't see your faces. Yes, Esmeralda, you can take the floor. Thank you, Madam President. I would like to agree with solidarity. The women that have shared with us their testimony today, the representatives of the petitioners in this hearing and the honorable representatives of the state of Guatemala. Madam Commissioner, you have mentioned the key, a key point in the regarding the result of this hearing. I would like to make emphasis on the fact that this is a space of dialogue, a space of agreement to be able to listen to both parties. And I share your criterion when assessing there are two opposing perspectives. I would like to call on the state for this constructive dialogue becomes a reality so that we can share between the parties, in this case, indigenous women, the need of working together in these aspects that they demand as the right, the right to life, to water, to land, to their spaces. And they were saying that the essence of this request or demand is based on the energy of water and the path, that's what they said. And they have mentioned the harassment, searches, attacks against the inhabitants of certain communities. And one of them pointed out the right to say, this is the truth. So what is the position of the state before this demand made by women regarding the protection of the rights? which they are defending the rights of their families. They are in the first line of defense. And in order to develop this dialogue, I would like is to be candid in the search for responses. I would like to have this possibility to listen to the state how they face the demand of indigenous women and what are their perspectives and responses. That's all, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Arosemena, Commissioner Joel Hernandez, who is the reporter of Human Rights Defenders. Thank you, Madam President. I am confused. And I have to confess that I do not have the capacity to take on so much information at such speed to have a clear uh, idea of what the message, the messages the state was able to share. I don't want to question the good faith measures the state has adopted to defend the environment and the right to defend human rights, which is the main topic of this hearing. I think that what um, women who defend the environment would like to hear is for the state to explain what are the measures they are adopting within their policy to protect human rights defenders addressing those policies with the gender approach 
And in that sense, I would like them to share with the petitioners the most recent developments carried out by Guatemala to comply the uh, with the judgment of the Inter-American Court regarding the rights of human rights defenders. If that goal is uh, met, we would be meeting the goal of the hearing, not for the benefit of the commission, but of, for the benefit of the organizations present here today. If they could say in a clear uh, way at a lower speed, a um, summary of the policies implemented by the state in order to protect the right to defend human rights in this case of environmental advocates. A second request in a respectful way would be if you could share the process to ratify the Escazú agreement. They mentioned um, information, they mentioned certain agreements um, to which Guatemala has been signatory but the uh, Esquesu agreement is an essential tool to guarantee the right to defend rights. We know that Guatemala is a signatory. We would like to know the steps that are being taken to ratify this agreement. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Hernandez, Commissioner Piovesam. Thank you, Madam President. I would like to greet my colleagues, the special rapporteur, Soledad Garcia Munoz, our executive secretary, Tania Renaud, the ad hoc uh, secretary, Marika Via Pulido, and also the indigenous women, environmental defenders, because of their demands, because they have shared their pain, and also the representatives of the estate. They provided a lot of information. I tried to took down notes, but I have three requests. The first one has to do with companies and human rights, because the commission has adopted a thematic report in November 2019 regarding inter-American standards, companies, and human rights. We have heard the demand of indigenous women, environmental advocates regarding this issue, that is to say the disproportionate impact of the uh, private uh, activity, especially mining companies, the mine Phoenix that impacts on their lives, the right to water, the right to health, to food, a healthy environment. There's a multidimensional impact as several rights are being violated. Regarding the American standards, companies have the duty to respect human rights, adopting due diligences, and the human rights impact assessment has to be carried out. At the same time, the state has the duty to protect human rights, adopting all measures to avoid violations. And we have heard there is a great level of uh, violations of rights due to these um, projects of, uh, that exploit uh, natural resources. So I would like to receive more information about that. Secondly, I want to highlight the request of my, my colleague, Commissioner Joel, because we have the voice of indigenous uh, women, leaders, uh, environmental advocates, and the, the, the complaint regarding the militarization, disproportionate use of force. And I would like to know more about public policies to guarantee the integrity of uh, women 
indigenous women environmental advocates. And finally, I would like to know about the special mechanisms to access environmental justice. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Commissioner Pivestan. I don't know if the Executive Secretary would like to ask any questions, otherwise I will give the floor to the Special Rapporteur. Soledad, uh, you have the floor now. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, I will be brief because the Commission has already mentioned all the topics that are of concern to me. I have a reflection to highlight the importance of uh, women's participations, especially environmental advocates for the uh, protection of the right to a healthy environment. And this hearing is an opportunity for Guatemala to get in touch and establish a dialogue with these women that are present here today before the commission at a very important time for the uh, world, for Guatemala, for the region, not only because of the environmental pollution due to private activities, but also because of climate change and how climate change affects in a differentiated way Latin America and Guatemala in particular. So I would like to you to take into account the disproportionate impact that uh, climate pollution has, environmental pollution has on women and on indigenous women and their relation with nature. And it's very important to implement public policies, take into account inter-American standards, for example, in terms of uh, companies and human rights as Commissioner Piovesan has mentioned. The special rapporteurship is at the disposal of the civil society and the state to contribute in such important issues. Thank you. Thank you, Soledad. I will now give the floor back to the civil society organizations. You have only 12 minutes. Please respect the time because we have another hearing after this one. So 12 minutes for the civil society organizations and 12 minutes for the state. Thank you, commissioners, for listening to my colleagues and the women's from the women from territories that have spoken on this hearing. I would like to answer to some of the questions and afterwards a member of the study Sava will pose some of the situations related to those questions. In relation to why we are saying that the consultation process is being breached in the study Sabah, well, it's important for the commission to know that after the judgment, the definite judgment, uh, the Minera, the mining project Phoenix has never stopped its operations here. In spite of the fact that the communities requested this publicly, the mining project has never stopped. That's the first aspect in, on which we cannot speak about a prior consultation if the project on which the consultation process is has to be carried out is, keep, is still being implemented and operated. There were several construers of the uh, court and they complied in a biased way with some of the paragraphs of the sentences. The same people who asked for the writ of Amparo are not part of the prior consultation meetings that are held with the Guatemalan state. So to which people is the Guatemalan state consulting through these consultation meetings? It would be also important to us. For the Guatemalan state should provide information on the 
amount of military elements and tools that were used for the state of siege. And we would like to know figures on how the public force were mobilized. And we want to state that there was an abuse of the force against women and their houses. It's important as well for the state to provide certain information that within the framework of the development of this project has been implemented in the territory. We know that to date, the last state of prevention occurred when the judgment was issued that the prior consultation process has been finished. So there are sessions within the process of a militarization process and violation of constitutional warranties. So there is no free consultation. There is no prior consultation and it's not culturally adequate. If we know that the women, the communities, those who resisted during 22 days as has been said by the colleague because they were being excluded of the consultation process and they wanted to be included in it. The institutional response was the use of a force. Likewise, in relation to environmental justice, well, effectively, it is necessary to mention that the use of the mechanisms of environmental justice existing in Guatemala has have been used to criminalize the human rights advocates, but we do not have judgments on pollution or pollution created by the extractive industries in the country. That is important to mention because what we do have is a wide variety of uh, complaints against human rights advocates. One of the findings in the verification proceedings carried out were that during the raids to people who had a copy of the judgment of the Constitutional Legal Court were uh, accused of having uh, of committing a crime because they had information and they participated in the resistance and that is the reason why they would be detained that is part of the uh, situation and uh, lived or experienced by people during the state of siege uh, the Guatemalan state has not ratified the one agreement that is why we mentioned that these actions of the Guatemalan state become systematic because we do not see clear and consistent actions to warrant in the long term the life and the integrity and especially the security of those who denounce these kinds of this kind of um, affections in their communities it's also worth mentioning that out of the different aggressions against the body of women, we do not have a report and it would be very important for the Guatemalan state to tell us how many women they had to assist, how many children with gases that inhale gases had to be attended to in the hospital, how many people whose uh, house had been raided. Um, there, there was a, pro a security product protocol for their families not to be heard and we would like to request that information from the state i will allow the rest of the minutes the some minutes for my colleague to speak i'm going to expand on what the waterman and state said there was no prior free prior consultation because the state of Guatemala declared a state of siege and within this state of siege they carried out the consultation process but that's no consultation they just offered some 
representatives to sign some of the records and that's not a consultation process because I was at a meeting, I was present at a meeting in my neighborhood where the mayor offered food to people if the records were signed, but that's not consultation. That is why we do not agree with what the state said because the consultation was made behind our backs and that's not a free consultation process. That is why our people do not agree with that. We told the vice minister of energy and mines that the operations of the company should stop and then there should be a consultation process carried out. That is why we were in the resistance for 20 days. And the mining activities should have been suspending due to the judgment and the authorities uh, named by the communities had to be taken into consideration, but those who were at those consultation process are the community stakeholders who are working in the mining itself. And the councils are named by the company itself and by the municipality and the Guatemalan state. So there was no consultation. That's not valid. We require the authorities, the international authorities to intervene because there are people who did not agree with the signing of those records. And these consultations were carried out in secret. They offered work or jobs to people in exchange for this consult for the participation in this consultation. So we reject what was done within the state of siege because meetings cannot be conducted in a state of siege. So we do not agree with that consultation. That's all, thank you. You still have one minute and 45 seconds. Is anybody else going to use the floor? You have one minute, 30 seconds. Well, I would also like to tell you about this consultation process that the Guatemalan state is mentioning. We, the ancestral councils, were not included in those processes. And that right is being required from the state and the state did not granted our right. So why is the state saying that it did comply with and they provided for our right? And it's not true. We are from the Lestor and we know very well what's the situation and we know how this consultation is being carried out. The Hokones are carrying out this consultation in a place other than this tour. And all the people who get to that consultation are captured by the company. As my colleague said they were off a job. Why is the company offering jobs? Why when they started with the business, 
they were not offering jobs at the beginning, but we reject together with your efforts that are supporting us internationally, we reject the consultation process as mentioned by the state. Well, thank you very much to the organizations. We will give the floor to the representations of the states during 12 minutes. Thank you, Madam President. The delegation of the Guatemalan state has uh, written down the request of the commissioners. We would like to give a better answer to the questions raised. I will give the floor to the Minister of Energy and Mines, who is part of this Guatemalan delegation, who will answer to some of the answers that were posed. So, Minister, I thank you for your intervention so that you can answer the questions posed by the court, the Commission. Can you hear me well? Is it okay? Thank you, Honorable Commission and Honorable President of the Commission. For me, it's a pleasure to be here with you today and to share the vision from the Ministry of Energy and Mine, and of course, from the government of the Republic of Guatemala as to what the environmental advocates representatives represented today. I will say that you mentioned some difficulty to understand all the instruments posed by the state. I will confess. I will try to be short, but I will try to address all the topic that you asked. I will start with a doubt that is common to many of the commissioners and the answers to the complaint made by the defenders as to the fact that the administration of the Republic did not comply with the sentence, I, the judgment. I will say that that is not true. The, the, state, the Ministry of Energy and Mines which was the institution, were very careful to comply with the spirit of the, of the judgment. What has happened here, I believe, is due to a misunderstanding of what the court, of the decision the court made. In the rate of Amparo, I must say, the writ of amparo was not um, was not requested by the Association of Human Rights. There were it was requested by several people acting on their own. Uh, some of them were fishers, but not all of them. And the writ of amparo had to do with the lack of compliance by the government of the Republic, in especially the Ministry of Energy and Mines, to carry out the prior consultation to which we are forced due to the fact that we are a signatory state and having ratified the, 100, the Com Convention 169 of the ILO. There were not allegations as to the violation of the right to life or right to environment or right to gender or any other right. All of them are important, but the only one to which the Amparo made reference was to the prior consultation process before the mining started operating and the Supreme Court in the first instance recognizes the lack of compliance by the government and requires the government to reparate it. That is why the government of the Republic started 
reparating this in a complete and a thorough way, but also within the reasonable time deadlines, because we need to restitute the Kichin indigenous people the right to have their consultation process. Basically, the judgment orders us to carry out the consultation process and to suspend the resolution that granted the mining license during the term during which the consultation process was carried out. This uh, right uh, of this licensing right for the Minera Phoenix project is suspended from the beginning of the year. But here there is a, another misunderstanding because the court said that the resolution 208 is suspended, but they did not suspend any other activity or any other mining rights. What happens is that within the area of the store, there is the exploitation rights, but there is also a mining processing plan which belongs to a company that is called Prading. The mining processing does not require any type of state license. It's not a mining industry, it's an industrial industry. And it was not questioned within the right, right of Amparo proceeding. So the Ministry of Mining was not requested to suspend these operations because we cannot grant a license for these uh, operations to be carried out. What I can warranty is that the right of um, mining exploitation is not suspending from the date of the suspension. That did not mean that the processing plan could not keep on operating with minerals that come from other mining uh, properties. It, they couldn't come from the Phoenix project. There, there is a lack of compliance. The court suspends the operations of the mine but it's actually suspended the mining concession or title. And the government of the Republic and the Guatemalan state has the obligation to comply with the rights of both parties with no, no matter the tax raise beyond the features established by the constitution. So I will close this by saying, those allegations on the non-compliance of the judgment is wrong because this comes from a misunderstanding of the judgment, but those who are interpreting it incorrectly are the defenders. Another argument to which I would like to refer have to do with the undue use of the forces or the repression or the retaliation of the state. I have to be honest and I have to deny that. And I will explain what is it that happened. When the ministry following the um, different uh, requirements established by the Constitutional Court, there were a series of opposing parties, and I recognize the right of anyone to oppose mining activities, but I have a constitutional duty, in everyone in this country, to allow the rational use of non-renewable natural resources and that is part of the Constitution of Guatemala. These opposing parties established three road blockades in the municipality of Estor, and that was in September or October this year. And there were two consultation meetings before that. 
these were not protests. These were road blockades. These were not peaceful protests. There were mechanism of uh, coercion to everyone who wanted to get in or out of a store. Those people blocking the road were charging not the um, miner or the processing plant, but everyone who wanted to go through a store. During those 21 days, the National Civil Police was present so that through dialogue we could um, Um, do away with these blockades because they were um, violating the right of mobility of all citizens and the rights of the processing plant as well. And these were illicit, uh, illegal uh, activities as they cannot charge anything to someone who wants to travel through these roads. So through the legitimate use of force, the state decided to leave that um, blockade. And that blockade was not as peaceful as they say. More than 150 officers were wounded, four of them were wounded, injured with firearms. That's why the um, government of the Republic wanted to act against this blockade. That's why the violence started. Those people blocking the roads illegally made the government to implement a state of siege that has been once again implementing, facing this emergency situation has been approved by the ministers and ratified by the Congress of the Republic. And it lasted. I want you to know that this is not uh, implemented right now, but the uh, implementation of the state of siege allowed a dialogue and many of the persons in a store thank the government for restoring peace to their people. That state of siege was followed by a state of prevention that is no longer implemented either, and communities in a store are at peace. I am out of time, but I can continue because there is something that is very important if you would allow me, Madam President. I want to tell you something in connection with the way in which the representatives of the uh, communities were identified. The problem is that we do not have more time. It would be very interesting to send all the information, what was presented at the beginning and the questions that were not answered. If you could send that in written, because we don't have more time i know that there are questions that were not answered but it's very important for you to send that information and the civil society organizations as well so that we can follow up this uh, situation so i want to apologize but we want to conclude because we have another hearing after this one i want to once again thank the organizations present here today especially indigenous women who have given their testimony in this hearing, the participation of the representatives of the state. For the commission, it's very important to find spaces of dialogue. We understand all the information provided by the government, and I want to insist on what I highlighted before, and my colleagues also said that there are important differences regarding the process of consultation and the compliance with international inter-american standards and the situation lived by uh, women who are environmental advocates so it's very important to find spaces of dialogue of agreement and the commission is at your disposal to help you and on the other hand i also want to say that the how important 
human rights defenders are. It's very important for them to be heard and they should be protected. They play a key role in a democratic society. So I want to make a call on the state to find a round table to meet the um, organizations to establish a roadmap and with that perspective the commission will be at your disposal to provide support i know that all commissioners especially country reporter and commissioner joel hernandez the reporter for human rights defenders together with the uh, staff of the commission the executive secretariat and the special rapporteurship can provide support in this regard there are many topics we need to discuss, many things we should solve and establish a dialogue. That is the only way to make progress. Um, we understand the different points of view. There are always um, communities that support extractivist activities and communities are against them. But the important thing is to establish a dialogue and that is of concern for the commission. I want to once again thank all of you for participating in this hearing and we said our um, support to help you establishing this dialogue and I ask you to please send all the information in written. I don't know if the country reporter would like to add further information or any comments. No, thank you, Madam Commissioner. I just want to reaffirm that idea to create a space of dialogue. Thank you. Thank you to everyone for being present here today and for all the comment, all the comments and demands that were made by women leaders today. Have a good afternoon and we stay in touch. Gracias.